sure to check out Agile's Geeks for your figures and collectibles. This video and YouTube channel is rated PG-13, so that means this channel is not for anyone under the age of 13. So what is going on my fellow collectors? How is everybody doing today? Daredevil 18 here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Storm Collectibles, DC Injustice, Gods Among Us, Bane. So let's get into it right away and take a quick look at this ginormous box, even though it's pretty much the same size as their regular Mortal Kombat figures. So as you can see here, we do get a very basic looking style box for Storm's new Injustice line, and Bane is the first figure in this line, but the boxes do resemble what their Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter boxes do look like. So we do get the window right there on the front of the box, and they topped us the age of 17 up. On the bottom, we do get a very cool image of the Bane figure, it says DC Injustice, Gods Among Us, Bane, and Storm Collectibles. And the bottom of the box here, we do get the barcode, a little bit bustle, little bit cares about, then here is the top of the box. And then the one side here, we do get a very nice image of the figure with that cool smoky background that I do dig. Then the other side of the box does have the continuation of the image from the front of the box, which is just pretty much a shoulder. Then the pack here, we do get a bunch of pretty cool poses you can get the figure into along with most of the accessories. But anyway, that is the packaging. Let's get this figure, but to take a closer look at this villain who broke Batman's back, and they did put him in that pose as well. Alrighty, take it a closer detailed look, and Storm Collectibles did such a kick-ass job with this Bane here. I do have a couple issues with it. First small issue is the left leg was not connected when I took the figure out of the packaging, so I pushed it together as tight as I could, and then when I was articulating it around, taking pictures of it, the left leg did pop off again, then I had to reconnect it, but it hasn't popped off since, so that's kind of a weird issue I did have with the figure. Another weird issue from the promo images and seeing it on display, I always thought something with the proportions looked weird to me. I don't know if it was the torso or the legs. It's something that that's throwing it off for me. I mean, it looks like a dope figure. I love the way the figure turned out, but something... Usually I don't complain about the proportions on a figure, but something is a little odd with the being here, but I, I think the head sculpt looks great, and this is the Injustice Gods Among Us version. The head sculpt looks beautiful, man. Love the way the mask looks. You can see, like, the stitching all around that, like, gunmetal grayish color and the black there. That looks so sick. Really cool looking. You can see tiny, uh, you can see like seams, some, some tiny sculpted wrinkles here and there throughout it. A zipper on the top of the head, which looks dope. I love the way the eyes turned out. Very clean paint all throughout the mask, and I like the way the mouthpiece looks too. I think that looks pretty cool. A really dope job on that. And then we have the uh, tubes connecting from the back of the head into the canister piece, I believe, on his back there. And I love the way the tubes look, too. They are a translucent plastic, and I love the shading all throughout it as well. Uh, the skin tone, I think, turned out pretty good. Very realistic looking. We do have those tiny little dots all throughout it on the arms, mainly. I don't really see it on the torso, though. And then we see his veins with all the green venom all throughout it, and it looks dope, man. And then we have more of the tubes, and all the tubes are a softer, rubbery-type plastic, and they, they all have that beautiful shading all throughout it. And I love the way the neck looks here. It just looks like he's like, you know what I mean? Just really cool looking. And it is that rubbery material, like how pretty much all Storm's figures are. And I love this piece on the torso here. It is a softer, rubbery-type plastic, as I just mentioned, but that looks dope, though. Really nice uh, sculpting and paint on that. They, have, they put, like, a dry brush on this piece too. I believe that's brown or something like that. And then the lower torso turned out pretty good too. It looks like we have like straps or something going on there on the sides. And then the back here we do get the, the piece that holds his venom there which looks great. We get the green, the red on there. We get the dry brush on this piece here which I believe it is brown and they added like a silver dry brush on it. Pretty cool looking. We get some tubes coming down here, some tubes here on the arms, on the head, over the shoulders and everything. It's really cool looking uh, torso on Bane here. And then the arms just look sick, man. These are definitely Bane arms there. The veins look great. We get a, a, a strap going around the shoulder pretty much or the upper, upper bicep. Then we do get the tubes here as well, which look pretty cool. And they connect into these gauntlets. And they are separate pieces, these gauntlets, kind of like the, uh, the ninjas from Storm Collectibles. I do like these spikes, though. That looks pretty cool. And then we get some uh, straps and buckles there. And then for the legs here, we do get the tubes connecting down to the inner upper thighs. 
there and we do get some sculpted wrinkles on the pants and I don't like how far out the legs stick. I don't know if that's supposed to be muscles because the venom is definitely shooting into the legs there. But we do get some uh, straps and buckles going around the thigh as well, which look pretty cool. And then we do get the knee armor with spikes on it. And we get some zippers on the front right there, which look pretty dope on the lower legs. And we do get a few sculpted wrinkles throughout the lower legs as well. And then the feet turned out dope too. I love the way the armor looks here and then the spikes on the uh, toes right there. But the feet look pretty cool though. Very nice sculpt and that paint detail on Bane there. So overall, the, 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 the sculpt and paint detail definitely gets an A plus in my book. It's just something with the proportions seems a, a little off. It's not horrible, but it's something that is bugging me. And I, I, I can't figure out what it is, but the detail on this thing is insanely awesome. But anyway, let's continue on. Moving on to the accessories, as you can see here, Bane is only included with some alternate hands, which I understand since he is a huge figure, but Goro was a huge figure as well, and he was included with a few more things besides just some alternate hands, so it definitely would have been cool if they included like a battle damage head sculpt or something like that, you know, some other type of accessories they could have given Bane, you know what I mean, but what we do get we do get six interchangeable hands. And starting on the top here, we do get a pair of fists, of course, which do come on the figure out of the packaging. Then we do get a pair of open hands where the fingers are clenched a bit. Then we do get another pair of open hands where the fingers aren't as clenched. Well, maybe the pinky is as clenched as the clenching open type hands. And I do like these spikes on the top of the knuckles. It does make the figure look a bit more brutal because it's like some brass knuckles that are just straight up spikes. But we do get some excellent sculpt and paint detail throughout all six hands and they are a very soft rubbery type plastic so it's extremely simple to swap the hands. And like I always say in all my reviews, when it's easy to swap hands, that's always a good thing because you don't want to risk breaking wrist joints on your figurines. Now, for the height of this beast, to the very top of his head, it looks like he's just shy of nine and a half inches tall, which is pretty damn big. And then here he is compared to the Mafex Justice League Superman, the SH Figure Arts Justice League Wonder Woman, the Revil Tech Amazing Amaguchi Harley Quinn, and the Mezco 112 Silver Knight Batman. And as you can see, this Bane definitely does tower over some basic or regular six inch scale figures. I mean, you can make it work because some comic books, they do make Bane extremely huge when he's fighting Batman, so it definitely can work if you want it to. And then here he is compared to the SH Figure Arts Infinity War Hulk, the SH Figure Arts Full Power Super Saiyan Broly, the Marvel Legends Thing, and the Storm Collectibles Goro. And as you can see, this Bane still does tower over these more bigger six inch scale figures besides Goro because they are both in the same figure line so they do scale much better together and Goro is a little bit taller than Bane as you can see there especially with his ponytail. And then here he is compared to the Storm Collectible Cyborg Smoke, the SH Figure Sage Mode Naruto, the Mafex Justice League Batman, and the Figma Black Swordsman Guts. And if you're curious how big a Batman or a Superman will probably be in the Storm Collectibles line, you can go by Cyborg Smoke's height here, which definitely is better than an average 6-inch scale figure. And then here he is compared to the SH Figure Arts Awakened Warrior Super Saiyan Goku and the Mezco 112 Deadpool. Anyway, there's some quick comparisons. Let's keep moving on with the rest of the review. So now for the articulation, and we do get pretty much basic Storm Collectibles articulation with Bane here. So for the neck here, we do have a barbell type joint, which we usually do see with these figures. So we have a ball joint from the barbell that connects into the head and then a little bit into the torso there. So with the upper part of that joint, you can get Bane to look up that much, down about that much. The tube does restrict it from going down any further as you can see right there it was tugging on it then you do get very nice pivot at that joint and then it does swivel as well now the lower part of that joint moving it back and with both joints whoops I ripped this head off by accident you can get Bane to 
look up about that much, which isn't too bad. And you can't get them to really look any further down than that. And then you do get nice pivot at that joint there. And then you do get swivel as well. So you do get some pretty good movement out of the neck joint. It's just the tube does hinder it from going any further forward. Now we do get a point of articulation at the torso and one at the waist there. And the torso here goes forward about that much goes back pretty good but you can do see a little bit of a gap in there so you might want to hide that and then you do get a little bit of pivot there and then it does swivel as well the waist here goes forward and back decently so with both joints Bane is going to crunch forward about that much which is pretty good and then with both joints goes back about that much whoops his head popped off the joint again and then you do get pretty good pivot at the waist and then it also does swivel now you can't swivel it too much because of all the tubes so just be cautious of that now for the arms here we do have a very nice circular motion out of the shoulder right there as you can see it is squeaking a little bit and then the arms do go out to the sides a little more than 90 degrees so that is definitely awesome they do go up and down we do have true bicep swivel in there then we do have double jointed elbows that do bend in about 90 degrees which is pretty good and then for the wrists here we do have a ball hinge and then we do have a peg that does connect into the wrist so you can move that around a little bit on that joint and then we do get the swivel and the hinge on the hand as well so i, I love the wrist articulation on these storm figures now for the legs here the leg joints are very tight on my figure i understand why they did it because he is a he does have some heft to him so bane can kick forward a little more than 90 degrees so that is definitely good ouch 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 and then goes to the back about that much be careful with that too though you don't want to go any further than that let's see if he can jean claude van damn it here and holy crap bane can definitely bang damn it and then we do get a nice hip swivel really nice swivel up there at the hip then we do have double jointed knees that do bend back almost all the way and then for the ankles this is where the articulation is really bad man very very bad ankle movement just like with goro so we don't get a swivel there which is pretty disappointing but the way they sculpted the pants here really restricts uh, the ankle articulation so you can't get his foot any further forward than that it's like it doesn't even move forward it goes down a tiny bit this is the up and down movement you get with the ankle which is horrible and it's because of the way the pants are sculpted and they did put in the pivot which is on that, that rocker so the more you pivot it the more outward the the ankle goes but the way they sculpted the pants it restricts it from going any further so the ankle pivot is almost useless so really not happy with how they did the ankle joints on Bane but you do get a nice tight toe hinge there so Overall, the articulation is definitely good for the most part. The worst part of the articulation, as I was just going over, is the ankles. It's it's weird. For some reason, characters like Goro, the bigger ones, ones, and now Bane have really bad ankle articulation. So I don't I don't get that at all. But you're gonna be able to get them in some pretty badass Bane-like poses, and I'm about to show you some of those poses right about now. But anyway, that is my review of the Storm Collectibles and Justice Gods Among Us Bane. Hope you enjoyed it. If I had to rate this figure with detail, I'd give it an even 8. Articulation, I'd give it an 8.5. Accessories, I'd give it an even 7. And the overall quality, I would give an 8.5. If you would like to know the price and where to buy this figure, I did get mine from Ageless Geeks. So you can check out their website at agelessgeeks.com. And when you check out, don't forget to enter in code name Daredevil and you will get yourself a bit of a discount. If you can't find something on their website, I do highly recommend going through their Instagram or Facebook page. I will put more information in the description below. And if you would like to support the channel, don't forget to subscribe and click on that notification bell. And if you liked it, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, oh well, I guess you didn't like it. But thanks for watching. I will see you later.
what Street Fighter boxes look like. So on the front of the box, you see blah, 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 blah. And it does resemble what their Mortal Kombat and Storm and Storm Street Fighter. Damn it! Damn you! And Storm collectibles. And then the bottom of the box here, we do get the and but and but and but and but and and but and but and but and but and but which is just pretty much his tricep. Tricep. His trap. Damn it. Damn it. Tricep is on the bottom of your bicep. And as you can see, this paint does tower over some regular basic sick. Infinity War Hulk, the SH figure arts full of power. Which do come on the figure out of the packaging. Then we do get a pair of. Ooh, almost said gripping hands, which they are not. Which do come on the figure out of the packaging. Then we do get a pair of sabad hobbit eyes and chubby tubes. In the back of the box here, we do get a little bit of 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 a little bit